Okay, so all I just did is I created a function called reset bullet and I moved the code that was here into that function and I created, uh, or I then called that function here. Um, we're not gonna create an enemy, um, so let's go into our animations and select an enemy. Again, make sure you um, crop the sprite so it's tight around that item. Um, what I'll end up probably doing is changing the um, collider so it's just this middle section of uh, the sprite. So he doesn't actually die if you kind of hit these parts. You have to kind of hit a direct hit for this particular enemy. Or I might make it circular and see how that does uh, when I create him. So here we go. Um, in my code here, let's go create sprite. So we're going to do enemy. We're going to put it at, uh, let's put him at 350. So we're going to push him over here and at 25. And then we're going to set the enemy animation to enemy one. So there's our enemy. Uh, we got to move him down just a bit. So let's put it at uh, 35. Uh, let's go 50. All right, there's our enemy. Um, let's start moving our enemy back and forth. So we're going to do enemy sprite velocity x. We're going to do a negative value. So we're going to do a negative, uh, let's do a negative 6. Looks pretty good. Now we want him to ping back and forth. So let's create a function called move enemy. So we're going to have a couple if statements here to get him to ping back and forth. So we want to say if enemy.x is greater than um, 350, we're going to do something. And then else if enemy.x is less than 25, we're going to do something else. So we're going to set the velocity of our sprite based on this. So it's going to be enemy.velocityx. If it's greater than 350, we're going to push it the other way. So it's going to be a negative 6. And um, here we're going to do a positive 6. So this should then, when I call move enemy now, so again, make sure you call your function. So, oops. After move hero, I'm going to move my enemy. And now it should ping back and forth. I should be able to shoot a bullet. But again, it does nothing, it does not interact with that sprite. So that's what we're getting to here in just a minute. Okay, this looks pretty good. So now we need to do our collision detection. So so we're gonna do like a check collide. So this is where we need to check if our bullet is touching the enemy. Uh, the other thing we could do is we could also look at, um, in our debug console, we could look at our sprite debugger. Um, I'm probably going to make this, I'm going to try to make this collider a circle and see what that um, does. So let me go to set collider type. And for my enemy, I'm going to do this as a circle to begin with. And let's see what that does. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm okay with the circle. Um, if you wanted to, you could shrink that radius up. So these are your offsets. So these would be, you know, pretty much zero. Bless you. And let's do a radius of 15. And let's see what we get here. So now, now you're gonna have pretty much have to have a direct hit on the middle of the sprite. Um, you could do that, or you could do a rectangle. If you wanted to do a rectangle in that space, that might not be a bad idea. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. Probably make this uh, 25. And I'm okay with that. You have to pretty much have a direct hit in order to take out the enemy. So, check collide. I want to know if... And then my is touching, here we go. So if 
bullet is touching enemy. What do we want to happen if the bullet is touching the enemy? Reset the bullet, very good. So we'll call that function. Add the score, so we can create a variable at the top again. So we can do a score variable. And then down here we could then add to score. So how are we gonna add to score? Score gets score plus one. Let's just do that for now. So after we shoot the bullet, we're going to check collide. So here we go. I'm going to shoot with my mouse. Missed. There we go. I hit. You're like, well, how do you know? Well, I can go to score, and now I can see that my score is a one. There's scores two. There you go, scores three. So we can see it's working. Four, etc. So this is working. What should our sprite do if it gets hit? Okay, how are we gonna show that it blows up? Let's create a new animation. I'm just gonna copy this one, so I'm gonna duplicate it. And now let's put some flames on this thing. So we can do some drawing. Let's do some orange. I'm gonna throw in some red. Throw in some yellow. And maybe some white. Perfect. We'll call this uh, enemy one destroy. So, when I go back to my code, if it's touching that, we're going to now set our sprite, so enemy, we're gonna change its animation to enemy one destroy. So let's check. Here we go, fire, missed, boom. Now, do we want it to stay this way? How do we get him to come back to a normal sprite animation? Okay, when do we want the enemy to reset his sprite? How do we do it that he like basically pauses for a certain amount of time? So we want a function that's maybe called reset enemy. And we're gonna do this kind of a way that's weird, but it'll work. We're gonna make a, a variable called delay. And we're gonna say that um, delay starts at zero. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a counter pattern to delay. So when is delay going to get added? Well, we're going to add to delay every time we check collide. Delay gets delay plus one. Or we could do, um, yeah, plus one. So what's going to happen to my delay value every time through this check collide? It's going to increase, right?
I'm going to start it off with a value of 100. When my enemy gets destroyed, I'm going to set my delay back to zero. And then I'm going to create um, an if statement inside of here. And I'm going to say if delay is less than 100, what should my animation be? destroy. Else, what should my animation be? So now let's run reset enemy. So what's the value of delay currently? So see how it's going up? It's going up and up and up. So at the beginning it was 100, so he looks normal. But now when he gets shot, missed, missed, there we go. It's going to be this way for, see that? And then he turns back. Now, is that delay too much? You think that's too much? And what should happen to his velocity when he gets hit? Yeah, we could have him stop, right? So let's change that. So we're going to go into my sprite.velocityx um, is touching. Here we go. Enemy.velocityx is now zero. And then I could say, if we set him back to the normal animation, right now he won't get started moving again. You'll, you should see that. When he stops, he'll just stop and turn back. That's right. So I need to reset his velocity too if he stopped. So right here, when I reset the enemy, if enemy.velocityx is equal to zero, so you have to use the double equal sign, for a comparator, I need to then set his velocity x to a value. So now when I run it, if I hit the target, boom, stops, then it should still pick up again. There he goes. Now, could I go into my animation and change this a little bit? Yes. Can I make it flicker? So I could. So I'm going to fill this. I'm just going to fill the entire thing um, with, with white. There we go. Now when I run it, what else could I do? Can I add a sound effect? So I could play a sound. So every time this here, I'm going to play a sound. Let's choose a sound. We have an explosion. Where? 